Hi, and welcome to Utah Homes and Garden. I'm your host, Miriam Claire Kearns, and in the time you spend with us, we hope to show you the very best that Utah has to offer for the comforts of your home. what happened the minute I finished designing this kitchen. That's why I chose Silestone, a cleaner, safer countertop with built-in antimicrobial protection. Silestone works for your design sense and your family. Let's eat. Mmm. Silestone Quartz, a cleaner, safer countertop. Oh, okay. Liberty Park was originally a farm. In 1882, the land was purchased by the city of Salt Lake from the estate of Brigham Young and named Liberty Park that same year. It's a favorite place for Salt Lakers to come, relax in, and play in. Now let's go to another great Salt Lake place that I think you'll enjoy. you're celebrating 25 years in business this, this year. This year, absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. You offer an incredible array of floor covering, wall covering even, right. traditional to contemporary. Exactly. And this is an incredible example of one of your contemporary pieces. Now, describe this to me a little bit. This is a Tibetan rug that is obviously overscaled. Uh, for the design, it is a combination of silk and wool. It's absolutely beautiful. So you've done some really interesting projects, commercial and residential, but you've done some great things with uh, Kingsbury Hall, I understand, and the Governor's Mansion. Right. And uh, I hear there was a really interesting rug that you did for the Capitol, the that State Capitol. That was one of our very favorite projects. We got the offer through an architectural firm, Max Smith, who's a very wonderful architectural firm here in, in Salt Lake. We've worked with a designer that was currently employed on the project, Ellie Sontag. So, so you actually copied the original rug? We did. We did. It's different construction, but we copied the original. The original rug was actually a chenille construction. We reproduced it in a hand-tufted process. That's interesting. Yeah. And so how did you get the rug back here to the U.S.? Did it come from Thailand? Well, it did come from Thailand, and it took 20 weeks to make the rug. So we had to get it back to, to Salt Lake as fast as possible. So we had to air freight it. And because of the size of the rug, 
and the size of the belly of the plane, we had to cut the rug in half, <gasps> ship it in two pieces, and then bring it back here and hand sew it together. So did that make you nervous, cutting it, the rug in half? It broke my heart. I can imagine. <laughs> so I would love to go and see it. But maybe we should go up to the Capitol and take a look. That'd be great. All right. Well, here we are in the Utah State Capitol in the state reception room, fondly known as the Gold Room. And we're standing on the beautiful carpet that you did about 10 years ago. Is that right, Kathy? It's almost 10 years now since we created and installed the rug. Well, it's, it's beautiful. I had, when you said the Gold Room, I had sort of thought of gold colors, but there it's a beautiful um, uh, uh, color palette that is in the rug itself. It's remarkable to think that this was original, these colors were original to the rugs. How many years ago? Probably, I think the original design uh, happened approximately 1930. Well, and it's an absolutely stunning room, and, and gold would uh, describe it accurately. Well, it's very royal, very regal, very formal, and it is a room that anyone from Utah would be very, very proud to see. In fact, I encourage anyone from Utah to come and take a look. And this, of course, is the reception room that um, visiting dignitaries come to and are received by the governor of the state of Utah, like the king of Tonga. I Absolutely. Believe, yeah. That's so. right. Great. So, Kathy, let's talk about the rug a little. The beehive, the state symbol, appears on all four corners of the rug. And I understand you sent the original rug back to Scotland when they um, uh, matched the colors? Is that the original rug had been down, obviously, for a long, long time. Consequently, we had some color fading issues. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we sent the original rug. It was much lighter in white than this one. We folded it up, put it in plain, sent it over to Scotland, where the local designer and the Scottish designer, who was working for the manufacturer at the time, basically pulled out all the color palms in their bank and pulled the tufts of the rug down to the very center of the original construction to get the accurate, accurate color. The rug that we copied this from was very, very light, and that's just simply because it had faded over the years. So the replacement rug, which this is, was very bright. I think one of the other acknowledgments that we should talk about is the fact that the detail in this border has um, a, a amazing uh, acanthus leaves and variation that you see on the ceiling itself that was designed originally by the architect. Well, thank you, Kathy. It must have been a true pleasure to be involved in something of such historical value. It was an absolute honor, and it will be something that I will remember all of my life. The greenhouse has changed quite a bit since the early 1900s, but it's still an impressive landmark here in Liberty Park. Now let's go and take a look at a different garden I think you'll enjoy. Tropicals with Bill Howe, the creative director, and who is going to show us how to pick out an orchid and stage it, and give us a few tips along the way on, our, on the care of an orchid. So tell us what to look for when we're buying an orchid, Bill. Well, the best thing you want, you don't want to see any discolored or wrinkled blossoms. You'll get those sometimes. You want to count as many blossoms, buds that are on the stem. 
And how long would it take for uh, these to bloom out if they're in the right lighting and the proper heat? Most of, of these will last you anywhere from three to four months. You might get may get longer than that as they start shooting out side shoots. Each one of these will start producing flowers too. So you feel on here, and if you have any swollen nodes, sometimes you'll get little side arms that come out. And what kind of light and temperature does a, a, an orchid need to be happy at home? Well, they're breeding so many of them now to be have such easy care that um, average home temperatures, average home light, usually when they're in bloom, you just put them in the house where you can enjoy them out of direct sunlight. Oh, okay. All right. And then should there anything, should we be looking at anything with the roots uh, or the leaves? A lot of people think that when they see the roots coming out of the top of the pot like this, that they need to be transplanted. These are epiphytic plants, meaning they grow in trees, and they use these to attach themselves and to, to uh, get moisture. So it doesn't mean they need to be transplanted. A lot of times they can stay in these pots for anywhere from two to three years. Now show us how you would stage an orchid like this. Obviously it needs some support. It can't, uh, the stalk won't stay out by itself. Right. A lot of people want to transplant them into a decorative pot, and the best thing to do is just leave them in the pot they come in and stage them in a, a decorative pot, and they can stay in that. You just have to watch your watering, make sure it's not sitting in water or whatever. And the ease of doing that is just tipping it and draining any excess water out so they're not sitting there stewing. So you've picked some curly willow to help stake this uh, orchid. Yeah, usually when they start blooming out, you get it again, you get really top heavy and there's a, you want to support them so they don't flop over. And they usually come with this bamboo, kind of a generic bamboo stake. You usually pull that out. And then you want to cut your support stick somewhere. I like to try to keep the uh, upper part where the bloom is um, free of sticks because you want the flower and to you have really, a little bit of grace. Yes, the and you want the flower. Then you kind of find the support where you, or the hole where the original um, where branch the went in, and you push down until okay. you until you feel it kind of lock in place. Gets in, and you don't have to worry about damaging the plant. It's pretty tough. That looks just lovely. And it, it, with the curly willow too, it, it sort of maintains the grace. Of it gives the it a lot out. of grace. And so you shouldn't be too scared of moving the the stem around the. No, the willow. they're pretty tough. You 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 want to be careful not to knock a blossom off. You watch that. Um, I've worked here 11 years, and I've only broken two of them. Wow. One of them was in front of record. one of them was in front of a customer that Good. actually asked if I've ever broken one off, and I I, I hadn't at that point, and I did <laughs> right in front of her. Murphy's law. <laughs> yeah. And then again, you can leave it plain and simple. It depends on your taste, or you can add some other decorations like different kinds of moss to enhance it. Um, depends on the season, what's happening. We also stage them in p larger pots with other plants around them, like ferns or. Um, different varieties of house plants create a whole arrangement with the orchid as the centerpiece. Well, that's just beautiful. And once again, you can either bring in your own pots to Cactus and right. Tropicals and right. you can stage them, or if you're feeling intrepid, you can come here, pick out an Pick out an orchid, yourself, pick out a pot. Um, some moss, you carry the moss as well. Carry the moss. We and can, go home and get creative. Right, you can do it yourself or we can do it for you. Great, wonderful. Well, thank you very much. It's you're a welcome. pleasure. She has this chair. He loves that chair. Oh, she loves that chair. It's a stickly. It was my dad's. It was her mom's, and uh... He wanted a matching piece. One piece, I said? So we go to the showroom. She went nuts. He went crazy with all the different styles. So I pointed out... And I pointed out... Great value. How affordable. So... Anyway... We ended up with... More than one piece. Like I said, but does he... She listen? Do you listen? Do you listen? Do you listen? Do you listen? I thought it was your mom's chair. You know it was my dad's chair. Tracy Aviary is the nation's oldest public aviary. It was founded by Russell Lord Tracy with his own personal bird collection. It was opened to the public in 1938. Today it currently has about 400 birds and represents about 140 different species. It's truly a Salt Lake institution. Now we'd like to show you another Salt Lake point of interest.
This beautiful mansion was built in 1904 for the Walker family, a prominent Salt Lake banking family. It's located on South Temple, across from the Governor's Mansion in downtown Salt Lake City. It, the local architects were Ware and Tregenza, and back in 1904, it cost $275,000 to build, a lot of money back then. In 1999, it was purchased by the McCarthy family and lovingly restored to become one of our city's true gems. From the moment you walk through the front door, you are struck by the beautiful quarter sawn oak paneling running through the house in what first seems a dominant craftsman style, then morphs with the stylish Tudor design. The great room is impressive and very open. Your eyes are drawn upward, and then an incredible discovery a burst of color and you're overwhelmed by a stunning stained glass canopy. Faithfully restoring the period of the original home, the owners also added some personal touches. We were fortunate to catch up to Phil McCarthy and learn firsthand about the history and the effort that went into renovating this impressive and historic Salt Lake City home. I had said to myself, if this building ever came up for sale, I think I'd certainly take a good look at it. In January of 1999, uh, I was informed that the building was up for sale. I immediately came up here and looked around and said, let's do it. I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to do with it when we first got it, but I did know a little bit of the history about it. Matthew Walker, who was the youngest of the four Walker brothers, these were people that emigrated from England and got here in the 1850s. Matthew Walker built this home in 1904 in the Spanish or the Italian Renaissance style. He and his wife lived here until he passed away here in the house in 1960. And one of the great events that went on in this particular house in the early years was the marriage of his daughter, Glenn Walker Wallace, Glenn Walker, to John Wallace, who was at one point then the mayor of Salt Lake City. So you can imagine this magnificent foyer in this great room, what kind of a celebration that would have been in that year. The grand room, as you gaze up, you see this magnificent glass, and it is Tiffany. As you look at this, what I was always struck by were these magnificent greens, these amazing purples. There was some mesh net over it, uh, some birds had feasted on it, there was a wide variety of things. So Bob Baird came out, and then it was like watching a jigsaw puzzle be deconstructed rather than put together, taken apart. One by one, he marked these pieces and then took them out. So while the main restoration was going on from the spring of 1999 and then August of 2001, we said we're almost ready. Bob Baird brought back the glass and over a couple of days we watched this amazing Tiffany glass be reconstructed and put back. In the meantime, Max Smith had noticed where the original skylight had been and we put that back. So you can see at various times during the day how the sun will dance across the skylight. And it's a great thing to watch in the spring, or in the late fall, and certainly in the summer, as we see all of these grapes and the wisteria and all of these great things come alive. Matthew Walker had a showpiece organ, an Aeolian organ built that was right here. The Aeolian organ took two men over five weeks to put about 1,500 pipes underneath 
this living room and back up this wall, most of these are now replicas. In 1957, when the Aviation Club owned the building, they sold the Aeolian organ that Matthew Walker had paid $25,000 for in 1904 for $25,000 to build this addition over here. And this would have been Mr. Walker's study. As you can see, we use it now in kind of, kind of our foundation room. It's the one room that, that very little has changed. We based the reconstruction strictly of the light and then the bookshelves. And again, it was all of that beautiful quarter sawn oak. So we've been able to leave that. Obviously, we didn't fill it up with quite as many books as Mr. Walker would have had in those days. But you can see this room is virtually unchanged after a hundred. The stencil that was originally around this great room or the living room it was almost a burlap, but so much of the rest of it had been damaged, we did recreate it. In these rooms, you can see these walls are made of quarter sawn oak. It was the one thing that survived for almost a hundred years, but it's one of the things that you can look around. Most of these things are original. They are here just as Matthew Walker put them in in 1904. Matthew Walker had a tremendous eye for detail, and fortunately we were able to find some people who had that same eye for detail. We recreated many of the architectural details, as again, through the years where some of these things would have been damaged, it only made sense to recreate them in today's modern material that will also survive all of the ice and snow and the different things we see in the Utah winters. Another architectural feature are these lion heads. We had those recreated. As you can see, here's one of the original. And now you hold this one and you can see it's a little bit lighter, a little bit sturdy. We hope, obviously, it will hold up everything as well. Shortly after we bought the building, Ralph Piercy, whom I always say kind of came with the building, his brother had previously owned it, we were walking into uh, this conference room and there was this dropped ceiling. And he casually mentioned, he said, Phil, sometime we put some old clothes on, you ought to go up through this little crawl space because there's an original ceiling up there. But once you sort of made your way through that, you can see this magnificent old ceiling, the stenciled ceiling was still there. And here in the dining room, you will see the original tulips and flowers that we recreated that Mrs. Walker had in there. Why does someone undertake something like this? South Temple is still considered one of the great avenues or the great streets in America. We are Utahns, and it's very important to preserve the history, the architecture, the tradition that went on here. Thousands of homeless pets living in Utah. None of them know how to ask you for help. All of them could use a hand. Five dollars from every family could save them. This building behind me was once the Veterans Hospital and then the very first Children's Primary Medical Center. It is currently being restored and is under development to become one of Salt Lake's luxury condominium projects called the Meridian. We're going to follow the progress of the construction and the interior design of one of these luxury units. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again to bring you more exciting ideas of the very best that Utah has to offer. See you next time.